what's been on my mind Sick and tired of the nine to five in the city light Hey darling We could get out of town See the beautiful world around Wanna see it now And get in that car Leave a little note And we'll drive real far Let's get out We can leave this city Let's drive to the open air Yeah, the countryside Hey everyone, welcome to the Farm and Pastor's Wife I am thrilled to have you here In my kitchen down on the farm Listen, if you're new here, my name's Leslie. I normally do cooking videos, lots of uh, grocery hauls, day in the life of farming videos, ministry videos, all kinds of videos. So um, you're just going to get a little bit of everything here. Today, however, I normally do some cooking on Monday, but tonight is our grub club at church, which is where our church goes out to eat. In the evening, we, we just pick a restaurant that has a large room and uh, whoever wants to show up, we just go and eat. <laughs> and uh, so we're doing that. So I'm, I don't really need to cook today and most of my cooking will be done tomorrow. So, however, there are some things I need to get done and I just thought I would bring you guys along while I do them. I need to get my table set and ready for Easter. I also have a junk drawer. I have several junk drawers that I need to clean out. And I thought we would just do that together while I go over the Acts study. I think I missed last week. So if by chance I did miss last week's Acts study, you go ahead and read chapter 19, get caught up and understand um, chapter 19. Today I'll be going over Acts 20. So, all right, let me grab everything I need. We're gonna move into the dining room and we're gonna set our table. So the first thing I'm going to do is I have a pretty tablecloth that I want to put on. However, it's cloth, which means if you just rub against it, it's going to wrinkle up and slip up. So I, but I don't want this blue checker to shine through. So I'm actually just going to turn this one upside down and leave it on under my cloth tablecloth. So I'm just kind of flipping this over. And then I'm going to run to the back and get my Easter tablecloth and get it ready to go on. Okay, so here is my pretty Easter tablecloth. It is very see-through, so you'll understand why I turned the blue plaid under. <laughs> It has tulips and butterflies. It's absolutely gorgeous. I thought there was bunnies on it, but there's not. And I'm actually glad of that because I can leave it for, I, although I have another tablecloth to leave on for spring, um, that's probably a little bit more my style than this. But if I ever wanted to leave this one on, I could. All right, so we need to come this direction. I had it pressed, but it looks like it needs a little more pressing. Maybe though, when I get, um, when I get the stuff on the table, it won't be quite as noticeable. I'm having a hard time getting the sides equal. There we go. Now, let's see. It's really long on that end. And it's really long on this end. So I guess we're good. All right. Um, 
I'm going to set the table and let it see what it looks like. And then I'll, do, if, if it looks really bad, I'll take this off and iron it. But I really just want to see what it looks like first. So um, I have these chargers here that I'm just going to alternate. They're pink and blue. We're just going to alternate those, these pretty chargers. Whoops. Go with me. All right, so now let's get our china out. If I can find it. Here it is. All right, guys. It's going to take me just a minute. Let me get it all out. And I'll bring you right back. So here is my table setting. I don't have the silverware out just because we use that now <laughs> to eat with. So um, I have the charger, the china. Let me show you the china pattern. I think it's super sweet for Easter and springtime. I don't know if you can see that really well. But anyway, super pretty. It's lined with silver. Um, so I have a charger, a plate, a bread saucer, and maybe a little dessert bowl. Or what I would put in this is we always serve cucumbers, onions, and vinegar salad. So I would put that in there. Um, now, these are my favorite glasses in the whole wide world. I kind of would like something a little bit more pastel. So I may just keep my eye out if I go to a store but I'm not going to go hunt for new glasses because these are absolutely my favorite. They remind me so much of my childhood and my sweet friend who is also a viewer. Um, she found some in her attic and I was able to purchase them from her and I'm so thankful. But um, here are some little salt and pepper shakers that one of you guys sent me and I love them. They're perfect for this table. Um, absolutely beautiful. And at this end, I have another set of sweet little uh, egg salt and pepper shakers that I got at Marshall's. So here is my table so far. And this is the centerpiece that I just threw together that I'm not super happy with, but it's going to have to just go for now. Stay, it's just going to, we're going to deal with it. But um, yeah, I'm super happy. And I just remembered. I thought I could go ahead and set this table and just leave it for Easter, but I just remembered we have a family dinner coming up this week um, before Easter. Um, we're going to do breakfast for supper one night, so I guess I'm going to have to undo this all, but I did want to see what it looked like to see if I liked it and see if I'm happy with it, and I am. And I'm just going to leave it for now because something may fall through on the breakfast for supper deal, so... Um, we're just going to go with it for right now and leave it and wait and see. So now let's head in here to the junk drawer and we'll kind of talk about acts while we're going through the drawer. I know myself well enough to know I'm probably going to get sidetracked and I'm going to talk about stuff in the drawer and talk about acts all at the same time. So let's just kind of concentrate on the drawer to begin with. and. Then we'll get into acts. So let me get you guys turned down here. Ta -da! It's terrible. And um, so I've got these great big things, which are, are mainly for the flat top, or I call it the flat top, but Bryant calls it the black top, whatever. It's that flat top grill. And um, so I kind of would like these to go somewhere else out of this drawer and so forth. 
these I can put with my mixer because they always get hung up in the drawer and then this this wire always gets out of its little it's got a little groove in there and because it gets caught on the drawer it slides out of its little groove so if I can just put those with my mixer down in the bowl I know I'll have to move them when I get my bowls out so these all need to find new homes right here I want new homes for these things um, this is Caroline so I've got some of Caroline's stuff out on the porch I'll stick that with that so that needs a new home this is what I use and this I use for canning so I can actually go put those back in my canning stuff so that needs a new home all right let's talk about this I have never used this I think it's for like pizza dough and it can kind of poke little holes I don't I really don't know what it's for um, so I need a pile of things that either I want to donate or toss or that I'm probably not going to use uh, and this is one of those things that I'm probably not going to use I believe I ordered something online like uh, from Amazon like and it came as a bundle and this was in it this wasn't the main thing I ordered but it came with it and so I've just kept it and I don't think I need it so this I'm it, I'm going to either get rid of in some way, donate, whatever. This I want to keep in here. Here's a recipe. <laughs> These I want to keep in here. This I want to keep in here. I have that beautiful rolling pin that one of my viewers' husbands made me, and I have got to get it re waxed and so forth and I have not done it yet so I've taken it out of here so I don't use it because I don't want to ruin it so I want to get it back in here because I, I prefer using it it's actually longer and I love it so much more but um, I've got to get some wax and stuff to put on it I just have not done that yet one of my kids put that in the um, dishwasher <laughs> Okay, so here's one of those things that I don't ever use. Um, I just don't. So we're going to find a new home for that, like a donate or whatever. This I use, but I don't know if I want to keep it in this drawer. Um, this can go over with my utensil stuff. I'll set it over there. This can go in my utensil stuff. See, I have needed this so many times, but haven't been able to find it because it was stuck down in this junk drawer. It's a fish spatula, and um, but I use it for so much more than like frying okra. This would be wonderful. So I'm going to put it over there. All right. Um, I would use this with applesauce, so I may put that over there. I use this so it needs to stay. I use this so it needs to stay. Now listen, this is one of many drawers I need to go through. Um, and I don't know how long I'm gonna, it's gonna take me to get to all the drawers, but um, yeah. All right, I use this occasionally. I don't use it often. So I'm not sure, I guess it needs to stay in here, but oh well. I do use this, my juicer, occasionally. So it needs to stay. Definitely would use that, but it needs to go over with my utensils. And we'll throw that away. Um, this is the greatest thing. Um, when you're frying up meat, and again, when I don't have it handy, I don't use it. But it is wonderful when you're frying meat, you can just, um, we'll just pretend this is meat. You can just go in, pick it up and flip it. And you have flipped your meat and it's wonderful. So I definitely want to keep it and find a good spot for it. 
<laughs> some Christmas spatulas. This one that looks like the top comes off pretty easy. Um, I guess I'll leave that in there. This one probably needs to be tossed. Um, definitely need these because I need to fill up my pretty little salt and pepper shakers. Another offset spatula that needs to stay or at least go in with here is a thermometer. Um, uh, I don't know what to do with that. Some cookie. They go somewhere else. They actually go in the drawer below. So let me just go ahead and stick them in there. I have so many of these. I think I'm going to donate or toss. <laughs> have you guys ever seen one of these? This is the coolest thing, and I didn't know I still had it. But it's to make your peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. You make your peanut butter and your jelly. <laughs> so that way you're not mixing up your peanut butter and your jelly in one container. So, um, but I don't ever use this. Like I'm not going to reach for a special utensil to make a peanut butter and jelly. Although this is really cute. Um, and it's a great idea. But um, I'm probably going to donate that. Here is the thing I never, ever, ever use unless I'm peeling carrots or whatever. I'll keep it, but, you know, I'm probably going to donate that. It's Pampered Chef, though. I'll keep it for a little while longer. Um, here, I'm glad to know I had these. Didn't know I had those. Um... Probably going to toss or donate that. That probably needs to be tossed. It's really nasty and gross. Here's some kitchen shears. I'll probably keep in here. More spatulas that need to go to another home. Those need to go to another home. All right. These. Um, I use very rarely, so I'm going to hang it up outside a new, a new home for that one. This can kind of go with the outside stuff. This I don't ever use, and it looks pretty yucky, so we're going to toss that. Here are some of those. I think those are these are those anti-cut gloves. Um, I don't ever use them. But I hate to toss them. Here's some more things. I don't know if they fit the hand mixer. Ew, that's gross. I don't know if they fit the hand mixer I have. All right, I feel like I need to put my Christmas stuff. I just saw some more Christmas. Um, here is another thermometer. I don't know why I have so many thermometers. Um, another Christmas spatula. I kind of need to find a different place for my Christmas stuff. Uh, I don't know about you, but when I start to clean in stuff like this, um, my nose goes to itching. This needs to go in with my utensils. This needs to go in with my utensils. If you haven't ever seen my utensil holder, it's I got it at Cracker Barrel. Actually, Isaac got it for me at Cracker Barrel. Um, I think this came with my espresso set that I have given to Caroline. And I probably need to give that to her. But, um, oh, I missed this. Yes, that goes somewhere else. This goes with this thermometer where you can hang it on. The pot. Don't know what that is. Don't have a clue. Oh, there's a bunch of those. What are those things? 
they look like feet to something. I wonder if they went to the espresso machine. These are tops to my metal straws that I like to use. Here is a plastic um, pizza cutter. I do use that on occasion. And here's another meat thing. So I don't need two meat things. And this one's much more heavy duty. And it is smooth on this side. And you just, if you need to like tenderize, this is just, this is pounding out meat to flatten it. But if you want to tenderize it, you're going to use this nubby side. And you just unscrew it and then screw it back on. And the reason I like this one is it's much more substantial. It feels, it's a lot heavier. And when you're tenderizing or smoothing something, you need some heaviness. This is much more lightweight compared to this one. So I think I'm going to keep this one, donate or get rid of that one. Wow, y'all. I need to give that to Caroline. Here's another one of these legs to something. I'm going to put that in that little bag because I have a feeling it's to the espresso machine. All right, so I'm going to take just a minute. The drawer is pretty much cleaned out. I have a wooden spoon that I don't use. I'm just going to take a rag real quick and wipe out everything. Got a screw, another screw, <laughs> another screw. All right, this feels so good to have this done. We're going to wipe this out. And before I put everything back, I'm just going to let this dry, let the inside of this dry. That looks like a piece of rice. <laughs> you know, always these drawers, when you are, when you're working in an area where you prepare food, they always get crumbs in them. So I thought, well, my utensil where I keep my forks and spoons and stuff, I'm going to move it over here so that the crumbs won't get in it. But for some reason, <laughs> that is still the crummiest drawer. It gets the crumbs. And I guess it's because we have like food or something on our hands when we're cooking and we reach in to grab something. And so I'm going to let those dry real quick. We'll come back over here. Whoops, sorry. And um, while I'm putting things away that go in this drawer, we will talk about um, acts. But first, I'm going to take these things that need a new home, going to take those and move stuff around, and then we'll come back and um, talk about acts. So let me get that going. Then we'll come back, put the stuff in the drawer, and then we'll sit down and talk about acts. So now that I've made room in here, the only thing I have to put back out that I'm getting, well, I got to figure out what I'm going to do with the donate ones, but um, these I got to take back to my Canon supplies. Um, but while I was, since I've cleaned out this drawer, I have extra room. So I think I'm going to leave the flat top stuff in here. And... Um, One, because if I put it on the porch or the carport, it's going to get dusty and dirty and I'd have to wash them before we use them. This way, I just probably rinse them off or if, if even that. So I'm actually going to put these things in here. Um, okay, the rolling pin. I'll go right here. My utensil holder. I don't think I finished telling you what it was. It's Four great, three, three graders that have been glued upside down together. 
and I'll show it to you in just a minute. But um, I don't know if that'll close. Nope. Lay it down. Putting our juicer in. I use this a lot. So I'm going to actually move the. I use my chopper an awful lot. The things I don't use, I'm kind of putting towards the back. All right. Um, I think I have one of these already. I'll stick it in here. Okay. And I'll put that in there. No rhyme or reason. But, oh, I definitely need to keep my funnel. I had a smaller one that I liked better, but, oh, well. Now, tell me, is this the definition of a hoarder? I don't use this. I have never used this. But I can't hardly bring myself to get rid of it. So, what do I do with it? Can I decorate with it? I probably could. I don't know. We'll see. I'll figure out something. But I don't want to junk up my drawer with stuff just because I don't want to get rid of it. But um, I don't use it. And, but we'll find a spot. I'll decorate with it somewhere. All right. So I can't wait for Bryant to come in and me show him this drawer. He's going to be so proud. So, all right. Now, I have at least, well, I have tons of more places to go to get rid of and go through and so forth. But I'm only going to do one at a time. I have a lot to do to get ready for Easter. We have to, I have to put our songs, I have to decide on songs and then put them in the um, PowerPoint because we're moving our services to a local elementary school so that we can all be together in one roof because our church has outgrown our sanctuary and um, which is an amazing problem to have. But um, yeah, so anyway. All right, guys, um, let me finish kind of tidying up in here and we will go have a talk about Acts chapter 20. So here is my utensil holder. It's just um, graters, cheese graters um, or box graters turned upside down and welded together. I don't know if you can see. Let me bring you over here. I think you can see this way. There is a little chicken, little red chicken in there. And that's the center pole. Um, but it's so cute. So I thought I'd give you a sneak peek of the drawer that will be next. <laughs> oh, and it's worse than the one we just did. So that one should be fun. So let's talk about Axe. And I think I mentioned it earlier in the video, but I may have missed last week's act study. And if that's the case, I apologize. Um, just go back and read Acts 19 and just kind of be aware of what took place in that. There was a big riot that took place. The silversmiths got mad and they caused a big stink. And um, But the reason they caused a big stink is because Paul was telling them to get rid of their idols, and that's what they did. And so it was affecting their bottom line a little bit. So anyway, we're moving on into Acts 20. Now, we know that Paul has been traveling around in Macedonia, Asia, Achaia, all these areas, um, Berea, Corinth. He's kind of circled around these areas, and now he's leaving this 
this vicinity. He's like, okay, I've, I've been around this area. It's time for me to go on. And he is actually going back to Jerusalem. Um, and he's trying, he wants to get there before, um, Passover, but he knows that's not possible. So his next goal is to make it there by um, Pentecost. But um, he's got to tell everybody goodbye first. He's got to kind of give his farewell speeches. And, and if you're following along in our Be Daring book, um, it's the name of this is A Minister's Farewell. And so he's got to tell them all goodbye. And uh, we see his farewell journey. He's leaving. Um, he's, he, he, he cares for these churches and he wants to go around and tell them all goodbye, basically. And um, he had two goals, and that was to strengthen the church and to raise funds for the believers in Jerusalem. And um, I, Paul truly cared for the churches. It's not that he just went and did this and got it started and did that and got it started and left them to be on their own. That's why he kind of circled back around. He wanted to strengthen and encourage them and, um, and, and wanted to help them be, become established. So we see him go on his farewell journey, saying goodbye to everybody. Um, and he's wanting to get to Jerusalem, but there's a plot to kill him. After the riot, there's a plot that comes up to kill him. And so he has to kind of meander his way in a different pattern, go a different way than what he had planned. And so then he's going to give this farewell service. Um, he, he wanted to get to Jerusalem by Pentecost. And we see that in verses 6 through 12, it comes, they start referring to it as when we were there or uh, it was us. And, and that meaning that Luke, the author of Acts, has rejoined him at some point. His, he's met back up with him and he's actually with them. And so Luke describes Paul's sermon um, as having uh, five elements. He talks about the Lord's Day, why we now celebrate on Sunday. And then he talks about the Lord's people, the Lord's Supper, the Lord's message, and the Lord's power. Now. If you've read verses six through the rest of the chapter, this is kind of a fun um, little story. Not a fun story, but it's it's a unique story in the Bible. And I don't know whoever says that the Bible is boring has obviously never read it. But anyway, um, the Lord's people. So the, the people he's ministering to um, are, are slaves. Their workers, and we notice that they met at night. And so oftentimes, um, we've we've seen churches who you try to change the start time of church, and oh, you can't do that. We've always done it at this time. Blah 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 blah. And they almost make it a biblical issue when it's not. Paul was meeting at night because these workers were were slaves. They they had fields to plow. They had things they had to get done during the day. And then they would come together and meet for church at night. And let me tell you, they stayed up late. <laughs> they stayed up very late, especially this night when Paul was teaching. Um, and, and they met around in the upper rooms of people's houses and so forth. So um, the, they feasted, they ate. Then they had the Lord's Supper. And then it looks like they ate again. I mean, it's, it's like, and it's, I laugh jokingly about Browers. Our church is doing something right. We meet, we eat. <laughs> and um, that's actually kind of what Paul was. But what was unique about these times of feasting and, and of, of this meal or this time is that the slaves sat right with their masters. There was no distinction of, of place. And in that, just like the Lord's, you know, the old song says the, the ground is level at the foot of the cross. No man stands higher than I and, um, and, and I am no higher than anyone else. And um, I, I love that old song. And um, so they talk about uh, and then they had to have the Lord's Supper. They have communion. And then Paul 
preaches a message. Now, this is not just any ordinary message. It is a long message. So let me just say, don't ever complain when your preacher goes over the time frame. Don't complain. These people did not complain. They were hungry for the word. They needed the word. And um, so, yeah, if the preacher goes a little long, don't complain. Okay, because you could have had Paul <laughs> and he started after the feast and he went all night long till the next morning. I mean, he preached all night long. So and, and nobody complained. And here we are. So here is kind of the funny, not the funny, but the unusual portion of this story and this factual story, true story. So Paul is preaching away. He is just telling about Jesus. He's, he's just preaching. And there's a guy named Eutychus. Now, we're not sure how old he was. We feel like fairly young. It could be anywhere between like 14 to 40. I mean, he was, he was a young, fairly young person, possibly a slave. Um, but he was sitting in a window and he was listening to Paul preach. And a I mean, just think about it. The air was probably blowing. He was sitting there listening to the preach. Anyway, he gets sleepy. He gets sleepy. And not only does he get sleepy, but he, this, and remember, we're on the third story. He falls out of the window, falls to the ground, and dies. I mean, graveyard dead. And so Paul, runs over, runs downstairs, runs over, throws himself on Eutychus and raises him from the dead. And so here we see the Lord's power just show up. And um, so I always say people in our church better not um, go to sleep because they don't want Bright Madrin to go just drop, <laughs> body slam himself down on them. But uh, it says, while scripture does not, oh, no, nope, wrong paragraph. Perhaps each of us should ask ourselves, what really keeps us awake? Christians who slumber during one hour of church somehow manage to stay awake during their early morning fishing trips, lengthy sporting events and concerts, or late night TV specials. Also, we need to prepare ourselves physically for public worship to make sure we are at our best. Remember, said Spurgeon, if we go to sleep during the sermon and die, there are no apostles to restore us. <laughs> we don't have Paul there to just throw himself down. So you don't want to fall out of any windows. But um, so then he goes on and his we, we see his farewell message. Um, that some of the group sails on to... Um, um, Asos and uh, Paul decides he's he's not going to sail that he wants to walk it <laughs> he wants to get there by foot we're not really sure why we're not sure if he just didn't like sailing we he may have wanted more time with the people he saw wanted a long time with the Lord which is something we all need a long time with the Lord uh, but anyway he wanted to stop in Ephesus but he realized it's crunch time and he does not have time to go to Ephesus and see them. So what he does, he invites the elders of Ephesus to come and meet him. And um, so once they get to their location, Paul addresses the, F the elders of Ephesus and he becomes more like a pastor than an evangelist to them. He was a pastor to the pastors, basically. And um, he goes through and he tells them, you know, I, I've suffered this. I've done this all because of what Jesus did for me. And, and he kind of goes over the past, the things that's happened to him, the, the battles he's fought and the reason he fought those battles. And um, then he goes on to talk about the, the, uh, his Paul lived above reproach. I mean, he was a holy man when the Lord changed his life. He, he was completely and utterly sold out, which we all need to be. He was humble. He was cur uh, courageous. He never quit. We quit on anything. 
we quit so easy. If the, if it gets a little tough, we quit and give up. He never quit. And things were always tough. There was always people against him. And then his message was to repent. Has always been from the get-go was to repent and believe in Jesus. That there was grace. There was power and grace and um and the gospel of grace and that Jesus was the only way to be saved. And that was his message. And he also gave a balanced message. It wasn't just a feel good prosperity message. And it wasn't just doom and gloom and hell message either. It was there are benefits to knowing the Lord, but there's tough times you're going to have to walk through. There's responsibilities you have. You have action to do. And so his message was very balanced in the gospel, which is what the gospel is. And um, um, so then he talks about the present that, you know, hey, I know I'm going such and such and I know there's going to be trouble. I know there's going to be danger. I know my life is going to be threatened. I, I know all these things um, that this is what's coming to me now. And and he kind of gives six identities to his ministry. He he was an accountant. He took inventory of the assets and the benefits of the Lord and he took inventory of the liability and the dangers and he put Jesus ahead of everything no matter what and he was a runner he wanted to finish his course he wanted to run his race and run it well uh, he was a steward uh, he received the Lord and wanted to serve him completely um, he was a witness he wanted to share the gospel and the and shared it as it was a matter of life and death, which it is. The gospel and salvation is a matter of life and death. He also was a herald. A witness tells about what Jesus, who Jesus was and what Jesus did. A herald is declaring Jesus as King of Kings and Lord of Lords. And that's also what Paul did. And he was a watchman. He wanted to be teach them to stand uh, firm and to be on alert and to watch out. So he, then he began to warn the, remember he's talking to the elders of the church of Ephesus. He wanted to warn them about the dangers that are to come, that Satan's out to kill, steal and destroy and to, to watch out for him, stand guard for your church, be on alert, be ready because the wolves on the outside are trying to get in. Then you've got people among us who um, may have selfish motives, may have personal agendas, may have some pride, some may be jockeying for power and stuff like that. And then for the elders themselves not to become careless or lazy or selfish or covetous, to be to, for them to stay alert on their own behalf and to be sure they are walking in integrity. Being a pastor or a leader in the church is a huge responsibility not to be taken lightly at all. It is huge. And um, people that teach or preach are held to a different standard. And um, we need to be, um, we need to guard our own hearts to be sure none of these things creep in and they can so easily creep in. And I'm not saying if they have crept in that you're a bad person. You've just got to stay on guard. And when you see those things creeping in to stop it, to say, whoa, 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 my first call is to the Lord and that's who I'm going to serve. So um, it was uh, the study I loved hearing about. Um, and I loved hearing about Eutychus. And um, falling out of the window because he fell asleep during a sermon. And um, but uh, also we we learned about how important the church is to the Lord. The church body is a huge importance to the Lord. Now, can you be a Christian and not go to church? Yes, you can. And there are people who can't aren't able to go to church. There are people who work on Sundays. We get that. But um, if you have the potential to be in a church body, I w there's, there's so many benefits of having a church family um, that I can't describe until you're part of one. 
But um, this little paragraph said, never underestimate the great importance of the church. The church is important to God the Father because his name's on it. It's important to the Son because he shed his blood for it. And it's important to the Holy Spirit because he's calling and equipping people to minister to the church. It's a serious thing to be a spiritual leader in the church of the living God. And that's what I was talking about, about how you have to you have to be sure your people are. You have to hold them accountable. You have to teach them and disciple them, teach them to for them to go out and make disciples and to get them to work and um, and then to teach them correctly. It's super important. So I am so enjoying the Acts study. And I enjoy y'all doing it with me. I save it to the end because I know not everybody wants to hear a Bible study. But um, I appreciate y'all that have stuck around today and seen this. And I am going to end today's video. We'll be doing some cooking tomorrow. I'll be filming two or three videos tomorrow. And they will be cooking related. So... Um, I will see you guys tomorrow. I hope you enjoyed going through one of my junk drawers and we'll probably, I'll do one on Facebook probably sometime and yeah, we'll, we'll go through uh, another junk drawer another time. So, all right. Thank you guys for joining us. I will see you guys tomorrow. Remember if the grease is hot enough, you can fry anything. Bye y'all.